Hi guys, welcome to the daily current affairs session by Neo IAS. Today, on 18th February 2019, we are going to discuss the topics Swachhada Excellence Awards, Great Indian Hornbill, then Tagore Award, Black Buck, Kumbha Mela in Karnataka, and Current Affairs Capsule, and our daily sessions of Map Aided Program and PQRS. So, our first topic is Swachhada Excellence Awards. So, why it came in news because the Chhattisgarh Raigarh Municipal Corporation, it won the Swachhada Excellence Awards 2019. So, the Raigarh Municipal Corporation won the Swachhada Excellence Awards 2019. So, more details that is DAY. In New Yella, uh, Swachhada Excellence Award, it has been uh, given for the uh, or it has been given on the recognition of three level. That is the area level federation (ALF), city level federation (CLF), and urban local bodies. That is ULB. For what? For their different works towards achieving. Sanitation outcome, and um, they are conducting this sanitation works along with communities, and they are also promoting dignified livelihoods in the sanitation sector. Okay, and it is initiated by the Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs, and the different community-based organization which are nurtured under. D A Y in U L M that is Deen Dayal Andhyodhya Yojana National Urban Livelihood Mission. It have participated actively in the cleanup activities and awareness campaigns under Swachh Bharat Abhiyan. Then, what are its objectives? Its main objective, as I said, is to bring cleanliness and sanitation, as well as to promote livelihoods in the sanitation sector to the forefront of social discourse and it also uh, its object, objective is to encourage ulb alf and clf for their different initiatives related to mainly elimination of open defecation then eradication of manual scavenging behavioral change towards healthy sanitation and also it uh, aims to create awareness about its impact on public health and other modern and scientific solid waste management that is creating a better awareness to the people regarding these sanitation activities and another objective is to incentivize urban local bodies to mainstream informal sanitation workers and to improve their income earning capacity and engage the community organization to achieve sanitation and cleanliness outcomes these are its objectives and please note that the swachh bharat abhiyan it is being implemented by the ministry of housing and urban affairs and the ministry of drinking water and sanitation for urban and rural areas uh, because uh, usually these ministries are uh, are often asked in our prelims exam. So please note that this Swachh Bharat Abhiyan it is being implemented by the Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs and the Ministry of Drinking Water and Sanitation for urban and rural areas. Okay. Well, our second topic is Great Indian Hornbill. It's a topic from Environment. Why we are discussing this because the research uh, research works have shown that this great Indian hornbill, they can adapt to the modi modified habitat, provided food, nesting and all requirements. Okay, this great Indian hornbill, we know that it is one of the larger member of the hornbill family and it is an important bird in the tribal cultures and rituals and it has got a, a somewhat big size and a unique color and it is usually distributed along Indian subcontinent and Southeast Asia. 
and uh, the great hornbill it is long lived that is uh, approximately for 50 years and it is predominantly frugivorous that is uh, they mainly depend upon fruits that is raw fruits vegetables but they also preys on mammals reptiles and birds then uh, its conservation status and threats it comes under vulnerable status on the IUCN red list of threatened species and it is listed in appendix 1 of site and the tribal people they usually hunt this hornbill for uh, their ritual purpose and also making headgears and other decoration and even for delicacy. So the main um, reason for its threat is habitat loss and hunting. These are the major threats faced by great Indian hornbill and it comes under vulnerable status. Okay. Then next topic that is Tagore Award. So our president, uh, he presented this Tagore Award of Cultural Harmony to Rajkumar Singh Chit Singh and uh, a Bangladesh cultural organization that is uh, Chai Note and Ram Sudar Wanchi for the years 2014, 15 and 16 respectively. So this Tagore Award has been given for these three groups. Okay. Then what is this uh, Tagore Award? As the name suggests, it, is, uh, it recognizes the contributions made by Rabindranath Tagore to humanity by his works and also his ideas for promoting values of cultural harmony. So it was instituted by the government of India from 2012. In this 2012, it was given as a part of commemoration of Tagore's 150th birth anniversary that is in 2012. And first it was awarded for uh, Pandit Ravi Shankar in 2012 and second it was given to Subin Mehta in 2013 and now it was given to these three groups. Okay. It was usually awarded annually and its jury consists of five members that is the chairman ex officio being the Prime Minister of India and another member is Chief Minister of India and leader of opposition and two eminent person. So there are five members in this jury. Then, and this annual award it is given to individuals then association institution for their outstanding contribution towards promoting cultural harmony. Okay and uh, this award is open to all person regardless of nationality, race, language, caste, creed etc. Then our next topic is black buck. So it is a topic from environment and why we are discussing this because this black buck they faces a severe threat from stray cattle then attacks by stray dogs and habitat fragmentation due to change in land use and cropping patterns in Punjab Abohar wildlife sanctuary. So this black buck they are facing a severe threat. So, uh, the reason is that usually uh, cobra wires were done to keep the stray cattle away. But often this cobra wires they cause fatal injuries to black bugs during dog attacks. That is the main one of the main reason for their fatal injury. Then this natural habitat of black bugs has been often disturbed. Why? Because of this habitat fragmentation due to the change in land use and cropping pattern. Then another reason is that the growing population of stray animals also competes, they competes with this black bugs because both of them are depending upon open grasslands for their food. So this uh, cobra wires, then habitat fragmentation then also competition from other stray animals are some of the reason for this threat. Okay. 
let us see more details regarding this black bug. We know that it is the fate animal of Punjab. It is also known as Indian antelope and it is the sole extant member of genus antelope and uh, it is mainly found in India, Nepal and Pakistan and it is a native to India and it is somewhat extinct in Bangladesh and they usually inhabits in grassy plains and slightly forested areas and they also prefer areas where water is perennially available. Okay, then regarding threat and conservation status. We found that their numbers are declining sharply due to the excessive hunting, deforestation and habitat degradation. And uh, the hunting of this black bug, it is prohibited under Schedule 1 of the Wildlife Protection Act of 1972. And it is evaluated as least concern on the IUCN red list. So, earlier we discussed about Great Indian Hornbill. It is evaluated as vulnerable and it is uh, these species they are recorded as least concern. Okay, least concern on the IUCN red list. Then, about Aboha Wildlife Sanctuary. This sanctuary is spread over 13 villages in Fasika district of Punjab. And please note that this sanctuary it is the home to the Bishnoi community. And uh, this Bishnoi community, they started to protect this black bug. Why? Because this black bug it, it is considered sacred to this Bishnoi community. And uh, they also protect Nilgay also. Okay. And another uh, peculiar feature is that this Abohar Wildlife Sanctuary, it spreads over private land unlike others. And uh, the flora in the Abohar Wildlife Sanctuary, it is classified under the Tropical Dry Mixed Deciduous Forest. And uh, it is also home to several other species such as blue bull, uh, then wild boars, black duck, etc. Our next topic is Kumbha Mela in Karnataka. So, a three-day Kumbha Mela begins at Triveni Sankama in Nasipur of Mysore district in Karnataka. We know that uh, this event, it takes place at the confluence of Kaveri, Kapila and Spadiga Sarova, that is Gupta Gamini. Okay, it takes place at the confluence of Kaveri, Kapila and uh, Spadiga Sarova. This Kumbha Mela, it is held once in three years that is uh, in Karnataka and to coincide with the events that take place by rotation at uh, Prayagraj, Ujjain, then Nasik, Haridwar in once in 12 years. And uh, here this three day Kumbha Mela, it occurs near the Sri Gunja Narasimha Swami temple and Sri Agasteshwara Swami temple. Then this Kumbha Mela in Nasipur, it is a it first take place in or it, it was first conducted in 1989 and its main objective is to facilitate people of the, this region that is South India because um, it is very difficult for them to travel either to North India or Central India to take part in the Kumbha Mela there. So its main objective at that time was to facilitate the people of this region to take part in this fest because very difficult for them to, at that time it was very difficult for them to travel to North or Central India. Then, a short current affair capsule that is Afshar app, actually it is a mobile app and that allows men in Saudi Arabia to track women relative and uh, it has been said that this app, it enables uh, abuse against women and girls by allowing men to track their movements. So, please note this Apsha app, it is related to, it is a mobile app and it allows men in Saudi Arabia to track women relatives. Then in map aided program, we will be dealing with Chabbar port. So, why we are discussing this because, so Iran, uh, it uses this Chabbar as a connecting node, not only with South Asia, 
but also with Central Asia, Europe and the Mediterranean. So about this Chabar port, we know that it is located in the southeastern province of Sistan Belujistan in Iran. Its main aim is to connect Iran with Afghanistan and Central Asian countries. And uh, it, can e it can be easily accessed from India's western coast by passing Pakistan. And uh, India, it has got a strategical interest in this Chabar port. And India has committed to building the 500 kilometer, 1.6 dollar billion railway from Chabar to Sahidan, which are both in this Sistan and Belujistan province. And uh, it had already, it had completed the building of Saranj Dalaram Road in Afghanistan and it connects Iranian border with all four uh, Afghan cities. So, India had already completed this Saranj Dalaram Road and uh, this Chabar port, it will be beneficial for India in countering this Chinese present in the Arabian Sea. But China, it is trying to ensure its present. How? By helping Pakistan to develop the Gaddar port. Okay, please note that this Iran, uh, Chabar port is related with Iran and Gaddar port is related with Pakistan and uh, it is being held by China and this Chabar port, it is being held by India. And this Chabar port, it will ensure in the establishment of a politically sustainable connectivity between the India and Afghanistan. Here you can see the Chabar port and its various connection. Okay. Then, in PQRS, that is prelims question revision series, we will be discussing a question from economy. That is, consider the following actions which the government can take. First one is devaluing the domestic currency. Then, second one, that is, a reduction in the export subsidy. Third one, adopting suitable policies which attract greater FDA and more funds from FIIS. Then, or which of the above action or actions can help in reducing the current account deficit? And our options are A, 1 and 2, B, 2 and 3, C, 3 only and D, 1 and 3. So, it is a question which is related to current account deficit. So, uh, we know that the current account deficit, it is the excess of imports over exports. That is, uh, if our uh, or if a country's exports is uh, can be, if we are taking it as export, if we are taking it as 100 dollar and uh, import, if we are taking it as 1, 1, 10 dollar, then the current account deficit is 10 dollar. So, that is, that means the current account deficit, it is the excess of imports over export and the policies that are favoring FDI and FIA, it will automatically, it will reduce the deficit. And uh, also, if we are uh, devaluating the domestic currency, then we know that automatically the export would become cheaper and it will create an additional demand for countries' products in the world market. But reduction in the export subsidy, it is very dangerous actually because um, if we are reducing the export subsidy, the country's goods, it will become costlier. So, exports would not take place. Okay. So, reduction in export subsidy, it can't lead to reduction in current account deficit. Then coming back to our question, that is, first one is devaluing the domestic currency. Of course, it can help in reducing the current account deficit. Then third option that is adopting suitable policies which attract greater FDI and more funds from FIIS. Definitely, it can also help in reducing the current account deficit. But our second option that is reduction in the export subsidy, they will not help in reducing the current account deficit. So, our answer will be D, 1 and 3. So, our answer is D. 
that's all for today's session and thank you for listening